Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode. I'm Michael Petro, and joining us on the show, joining me on the show, is Charles Fernandez, our friend, new debater Charles Fernandez from the Nerdgasm Show, doing another special features for you. I think it's special features number seven. Uh, before we get into that, uh, there was a little bit of a two-week hiatus, just some updates on that. Uh, one thing, our old hosting site, Podient, or Podient, whatever they call themselves, uh, sold to Castos. So we are now on Castos, and for the last two weeks, there was a week where we were like, okay, hey, we'll just wait. And then we'll jump on next week. And then, unfortunately, what was planned took longer because it's all IT bullshit. So we were like, we'll just wait because we've got stuff. We've got lots of stuff. We just didn't want to have to do that stuff twice. Post it on one site and then, you know, it's not moving. And you gotta, whatever. It's bullshit you don't care about. But that's what we were doing. So in that um, whole rigmarole fiasco, uh, Donnie Brook, if you will. Because none of us wanted to do it. Sean Geek Podcast was on that site. Witch Police Radio was on that site. Beaver Does is on that site. And we're on that site. So we're like a little Podient Boys community. And uh, it we've, we've all been going through this together. So uh, shout out to Sam and Sean for doing some of the legwork and sending emails and copying the rest of us on it so that we can see what's going on. That was super cool of you. Uh, so therealdebaters.ca has changed because uh, that old website that had all of our stuff on it that made it nice and easy to go to is is gone, but we'll be coming back in a new and hopefully better way with this new site. So with that said, when you go to the realdebaters.ca, you're just going to see the show and where to subscribe. Pretty easy, pretty basic. We should probably keep it that way instead of giving you all that other shit, but whatever. You never said you didn't like it, so uh, we'll keep we'll keep plugging away. So anyways, uh, you can follow us on social media still, at Real Debaters, at Twitter, and uh, Instagram. Uh, follow us on our YouTube page, Real Debaters. It's been a little dormant for a minute just with all this moving stuff. Um, my cat passed away as well, not asking for a sympathy vote, but it would love, buoy, our cat would love it if you gave us one. Uh, so lots of stuff was going on. So we were just like, time out. We can argue dumb movie shit later. And now later has approached, and here we are. So hello later. We're back. Uh, so me and Charles, this is an episode from a couple weeks ago where some big news hit. Uh, so you're going to get some old news bites, just our opinions on them favorite jackass movies because jackass the finale is finally coming and a bunch of other geeky nerdy movie tv comic bookie shit that we always love talking about uh so yeah that's uh, that's it i have no analytics i have nobody to thank because none of it moved over is so uh i'll shut up i'll cue that reel and you guys enjoy the show let's tidy up this tangle of film by putting it on a reel here is a motion picture film. A thousand feet. Sixteen thousand separate photographs. Welcome everybody. The section of the chart. What's the truth? You can't handle the truth. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order. I show you out of order. Hey everybody, I'm Michael Petro. And I'm Charles Fernandez. And this is special features. Fuck, we gotta keep track of this. <laughs> yeah, it's uh <laughs> Is it seven? Special Features Rick? definitely after five. <laughs> I don't know. That's what, that's how we're grading it. It'll say after five, there'll be a bunch of them, and then someone will be like after 10. There'll be a bunch more. I love, yeah. And then after 50, and then we'll just mess <laughs> yeah. up. After 50, we'll go to one after 100, and they'll be like, what, right. don't even know. what, is, what has happened? What, what you made it this far. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, it's nice that it hasn't been that long since I've seen you because it's been long enough that facial hair has uh, made an appearance back on your face. It is back. But don't I'm very, do very, don't do yeah, that. I know. Like, I'm very happy to have it back. The weird thing is, is I can officially call you a Zoom friend <laughs> because yeah. we have yet to actually meet. It is true. That is true. We've been <laughs> respecting everything. Yeah. Like, so, but it's, it's just interesting that I, I, you know, I, I thought I would never get tested. I had to get tested once, which is fine. Oh, yeah. I was, oh, a yeah. big, was a huge bitch about it, but, um, I, I haven't needed to yet, Fuck you. but Fuck I you. will be, I will be, I'm doing so traumatic, man. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's water up your I, nose. Yeah. And I can, you know, I'm sure it will. Like if I did the vaccine, I got to do the fucking yeah. test, right? Like, so Anyways, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the thing that we've been living way too long. That's not that's that, right. that's living right. now. Let's let's go into a world of make believe and bullshit and fun. Yeah, you 
play there where we're actually <laughs> how, how let's let's start with this because this just popped in my head songbird is on amazon prime have you heard about songbird um i think so isn't Songbird? it's the covid movie is it not it's the covid movie <laughs> oh Oh. So maybe, this this is kind of funny that we left the the bullshit behind, but we're it's it, it's, it's it's back it's back. I mean, I see how see once around the fishbowl, yeah. once around the fishbowl. I, right. just, I have to comment on it because I start I try I tried to start watching it, oh. and, and I it just I was like I'm not uncomfortable because like it was so amped up. It's so yeah. I, maybe ten minutes, fifteen minutes into it, and then I was like, Canadian Tire Run, sure, anything's better than this. Right. So. Um, it is COVID twenty three, so it's mutated on mutated on mutation, right? And everybody's stuck in their homes. People who aren't, uh, who are immune, are like bike messengers. So they like deliver shit. All like, Craig Robinson owns a bike. Like this is as far as I got. Craig Robinson owns a messenger service that delivers things to the rich people class warfare has taken over nobody's allowed outside of their house somebody sounds like alex jones in the background doing a podcast to start the show and that's where i was like i gotta go i gotta i'm sorry like i can't i can't give this my eyes i can't give it my i can't give the algorithm what it fucking wants to make more shit like that because that is too on the nose and too fucking soon yeah yeah like i'm offended for so many reasons that movie even got made I was that's crazy man we're not even out of this like I don't even think we're like really out of the woods yet and they're making a movie that's like that was like me and Claudia love reality TV so with watching reality TV you get fucking commercials for Grey's Anatomy and all this other shit Grey's (laughs) Anatomy was advertising like we're dealing with COVID I'm like wait a minute so you're telling me that even these fake make-believe fucking medical shows are dealing with COVID? Why? You're not supposed to be dealing with stuff we're actually dealing with. It's supposed to be insane. Like, what happened to the Grey's Anatomy where it's like, there's a dude with a bomb inside of him and nobody can deactivate because it might blow up. Not fucking, oh, COVID. Yeah, like, no, I, I agree. That's so dumb. Okay, they did that. Obvi- Shameless did that too. Shameless Ugh. wrote But like, what was interesting about Shameless was they wrote it into the plot about a family who doesn't have much dealing with a pandemic, which is what a lot of all of us, like all of us had to deal with the pen. Like it was just a very good way of showing a class of people dealing with it right, writing right. It into the show. But on the other hand of like trying to like pedal it in, like in a Grays way. Cause I know exactly what way you're talking. I did six years of Grays. Yeah, uh, me too, man. <laughs> right. Until, right until the Mick whatever's both left. And yeah, and like I and I bought it. I bought into it. I it's yeah, it's, man. They had it, some really good episodes in the early seasons, man. They did, and like yeah. I, really, I enjoyed the cheese because it was like they knew they were giving you cheese, so they yeah. didn't pretend otherwise, right? And that yeah. that's fine. Like if you it don't the lipstick on a pig, right? So right. And Shonda Rhimes can make great shit. Like she's a Absolutely. powerhouse producer and writer. But like yeah. after the shootout and Mick yeah. whatever Mick double double dreamy steamy. Yeah, you, you got was it? That, that so McDreamy is the main one. McSteamy was like, yeah, a side piece, I guess. <laughs> that makes perfect fuck. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can I can understand that. So the uh, shooting as season, I know exactly what you're talking about. That was one of the greatest season finales for a show I've ever seen. I don't care what anyone says. That episode was fucking wild. It was. It was really yeah. wild. The, the the way this all works itself out though is that see, I started away to move into another way now i'm calling it out so that's not even a segue anymore i'm a fucking idiot so like um call it out man the reason i started with songbird is because it's on amazon okay something big happened this week yeah with amazon that's right amazon decided to do a thing that to some people might be scary some stuff i've read people are like this was a legacy studio that they bought what does that mean for the entire industry yeah, and then other people are like, "No, this studio needs a home, and nobody had the balls to buy it yet." Oh, balls! I mean, money, printing yeah. money. So, what I'm getting at, without alluding to it any further, is Amazon purchased. Check my math. Amazon purchased MGM Studios, so the home of Rocky, the home of James Bond, the home of four thousand movies and seven thousand yeah, TV shows. Big classics, big classics. For eight point. 
four or five billion dollars. Yeah, man. <laughs> the entire MGM catalog will now be available on Amazon Prime. It's crazy. So crazy. let's start, let's start with the obvious question. Are you okay with this? Short answer, because there's a lot of questions with this one, but are you okay <laughs> with this changing how the industry, because Netflix came in and basically gave everybody the idea that, no, you can make this like on a conveyor belt and you can have yeah. this continuous momentum instead of like, you know, picking your projects and doing it. So are you okay with daddy Amazon owning James Bond? Um, You know what? Honestly, at this point, yeah, I am. I'm very excited. Trust the fucker. I I think <laughs> I I honestly think it's time that we had some new and really forward thinking blood taking on some of these franchises, man. Like okay. me, me and my me and my wife here are rewatching Mission Impossible right now, and I hate to say it, but Mission Impossible is doing what James Bond is kind of hasn't been doing since like Goldeneye, since almost like, you know, Pierce Brosnan ones, like nothing against Daniel Craig. I think he's a great James Bond. I respect the realism that they're going for, but it sucks. <laughs> They've done too many of the same fucking movies. Or have they just, cause I, they've leaned on Craig as much as they leaned on Connery, but Connery was at a time when people could tolerate a man who said he hit his wife, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah thing to say sean don't do that but but i think there was uh, innovation question. open mind yeah well, there was Ish. something back then in the water uh yeah but they they that was that was actually after i'm talking about the, the hidden comment was after but yeah like, that's very, right. it was very bankable is yes. the point. and um so i think they're trying to do that again with craig but now our attention spans are a lot shorter so They've just pushed Craig's bondness too far because Brosnan had what four? This will be uh, six. Is this six? Yeah, right? I you know I I know I think it's let's see there's uh, Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre, and now No Time to Die. So this is number five for him. But it feels I think it's been twenty years almost that that's, he's had okay. this role. So I, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> there it is that's why it feels longer is because the amount of time in between yeah make them and, and this spe this specifically fucking yeah the specific yeah. taking a lot longer and he made it very clear with the last one never mind no time to die that he's very exhausted with the studio process unfortunately like and this is another rant that we could say for another day but i believe sony has been leading the rights with bond and Sony, I'm sorry, they're not the right studio for that. They just aren't. They are, if Sony put all their effort into Spideyverse and animation, I think they would fucking kill it. I think they'd give Disney a run for their money, DreamWorks, all of it. But as a big That's studio awesome. like, what, like what Disney's doing, they're trying to do that. They can't. They just can't. Like, look at this. <laughs> There's so many things, but... Going back to the main Stay point, Amazon, Amazon has the right idea. So far, from what I've seen, all of Amazon's original content, just like Netflix, not all of it is amazing, but the shows that I've been focusing my time on are amazing. The Boys, Invincible, um, like they know as long as they have a team that actually cares about these properties... I th I'm really excited. I'm really like if Amazon wanted to do a James Bond TV show at this point, I'm like, let's do it because I never thought a, St a Star Wars TV show Whoa. would work, and Whoa, that, that changed the, everything. That's and that's exactly what uh, like the Broccoli family. Barbara came out and said, "We're still looking forward to a future in the theaters and showing the world." Like you know, well, those well, words, those words specifically are like the, the world. I, and right? Amazon makes movies; they're in the business of making movies. What I'm saying is that obviously they have a lot of avenues that they can kind of shop these things. Like James Bond movies, I'm still definitely pushing for absolutely, and I hope they do that. But for instance, RoboCop as a TV show totally yeah, makes saying. sense to me. Totally yeah, it, makes more sense. Fair enough. So maybe it's about. Because, like, see, here's my take on it. I see, I, I don't see a broken wheel. 
I just see a panicked industry. So, you know, yes. the housing industry right now, get out while the getting's good. Mm-hmm. MGM is one of, if like, it's like the, one of the first six NHL teams, right? It's one of the first. Yeah. They're major, one of the great. So Goldwyn Meyer, like it's yeah. the age of the golden age of cinema is in that, that, that box of fucking IP. Oh my God. I can't, it's you know true. what? I'm going to be sitting there when they drop it and you're just going to be like, that was MGM. That was MGM. Oh my God. That was MGM. Like, Oh yeah. Just going to be this culture shock. And so. Well, even just the yelling, the roaring tiger or the roaring lion, right? Like the roaring, like that. How many people know that logo? That's MGM right there for you. Right. And just associating that it's like, holy shit. I just, someone said something smart. I didn't say it first, but it made me think um that I, the algorithm you know who it was it was somebody who wrote two of the, it was one of the script writers for James Bond i think it was for quantum cool. something else and he yeah. said that he's just worried about the ai leading the charge and so that thing those, scares me that scares me yeah so those uh those things are what make me scared because they'll go, oh, well, no one's watching this. And it's like, well, no, it, it doesn't matter. See, the thing is, is that when you're going to produce this to the world, they're going to want to see it. So when you start going and picking and choosing what you think we want to say based on an algorithm, it might just not be that popular that month, you know? Yes. So don't buy all this stuff and then pick and choose based on what your algorithm tells you. So that's my worry is that they're using yes this big Cadillac and underneath is a Dodge Neon that you're going to get eventually. It's going to be this, 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 that's so down, good. you know, and, and, and that's how they think. They don't think like a studio and now a right. studio, which is 8.4. Like this is rights by the sounds of it. That doesn't mean MGM is disappearing. It just no. has cash influx of trillions of dollars now to do whatever they want. So there's, that's the, the, the tit for tat there. Um, well, but and, I, uh, y- you made so many good points. I mean, like the big thing too is unfortunately these studios main thing is it seems like the main influence of decision-making property buying is shareholder based. It's shareholder influence and it's shareholder based. And it's all about what's going to make them most money. And that's just the fucking way the industry in the world works. But it sucks because this industry specifically is creative. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, there's money, obviously. But what gets them the most profitability is the most create like creativity and an algorithm. Like we can't be based on an algorithm. Okay. <laughs> you know how many times I've dude, been like, dude, have you, have you watched any Westworld? Right. Right. Have, have you? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know that we're just a stack of fucking data. Oh, we're a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But I think like the creative decisions being based on an algorithm is so dumb because like, according to my algorithm, I will watch uh, American Pie Bandcamp, which is like, which one is that? Absolutely. And I'll finish <laughs> it at like two o'clock in the morning on a Friday. And then if someone asks me, hey, why did you watch it? It's like, I don't know, please. I ne- I want to erase that. And then if an algorithm is saying that's what he wants, make more, I'm gonna hate myself. I'm gonna hate them. I'm gonna hate everything about it. Like it's honestly, I think the smartest fucking thing that companies can do is like if I was running Amazon, I'd be like, Reddit anonymously, we're thinking about making a Robocop TV show. What do you think? <laughs> and see what the fans fucking think. You said that. And I think a RoboCop TV show is a perfect. Like, yeah, so good. But I don't think a James Bond. I don't see the thing about no, James, James Bond. Bond TV show. No, I think movie. It has to stay as movies. I retract that. We have watched that womanizing drunk. <laughs> like 70 yeah. fucking years, man. Like, oh, same, same guy. Okay. Hang on here. Same guy, same story, same plot. Just insert guy with strong jaw or you know blow felt yeah. or like whatever so there's a reason why it's handled with such care and when you give the fucking number crunchers who don't think like you said creatively um 
You just give them an algorithm that's like, oh, well, it's not doing this well. We must strip it. No, it's just because people have tastes and they can't like they can't watch everything all at the same. We point is we could talk this to fucking death. Um, there's good reasons for it and there's bad reasons for it. And I hope they listen to you. I hope they're listening to this podcast. <laughs> I uh, absolutely do too. Just Robo listen Cop- to the fans. Yeah, just that's that's what we're listen. here for. You know what? You have made a very good point, and I agree. And it's absolutely like I feel like James Bond, uh, especially given cinema history and its impact on it, it's just that novelty, and it's something that needs to be preserved within cinema. And what Amazon could do is Amazon. There's this whole obsession with making a shared universe, and Amazon's approach. Because I remember telling Claudia this now about James Bond is keep the movies, keep the movies, quality movies, make more of them like two year, three year in between at most, because we deserve that. And I think an actor that wants to play James Bond would want that. Um, Keep those movies going. But what you could do is expand the universe of the agency, for instance. And we know that there's a 006, a 008 that's existed. Who fucking knows? Like, is there a an 010, like I don't even know if that works. Wait, you know okay, what I hang mean? On, like, hang on, let me guess this here. Are you wanting to do a origin story of the double O division oh, of MI6? I don't want an origin story. I want whatever the movie's doing. Like if it's bought, say it's been bought for 25 years, the show, it's almost like what they want to do with Gotham PD with the Batman. The Batman's in the movies, and then Gotham PD. So the it could you could make an MI6 show, and whoever plays many like Money Penny or M in that show would be them in the movies. But that doesn't mean Bond's in that show. Bond could always be references on a mission, and those missions are the movies. <laughs> like Bond 007's away on a mission. 007's away. Like they literally could be a running joke in the fucking show, like Archer Styles. And then the funny thing is, is that Watch yeah, he is on a mission. Here's the here's the movies, right? Yeah, it's like you know what I mean. But it could you be neat. like it could be it could be interesting to see what Amazon. But I definitely think Bond needs to stay um, with cinema. What I will say is, I do think that if Amazon had Bond already, the Idris Elba Willy Woney, I think we would have had an answer already. Uh-huh. I don't think Amazon would have been like, oh no, a black Bond. What do we do? I don't think that's something that they would even really give a shit they'd be like address alba he's amazing <laughs> yeah, like, that's re- and re- everyone re- wants it like, <laughs> amazon yeah you can give them credit they're not racist like warner brothers or yeah like, like you know that doesn't like, seem to yeah. be an issue as we know like as far as we know that doesn't really seem to be a huge issue with amazon so i feel like things like that we would have like my opinion at this point is if idris alba can't be a bond can he be a villain because i think he would be a wicked villain no, he has to be Bond. I don't care. I mean, I <laughs> he has to, no matter what. I've, 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 had this conver- I've had this conversation many times, and it's the short list I've always bounced back and forth. He'd be wicked. Um, my short list now is Elba, Hardy, Hindleston. Hardy, in that eh? In that order. Hindleston, Hindleston. So Hindleston's definitely got that motherfucking suave, like that suave Bond. Oh. He would have like he would have me melting in his hand. Never mind. The kicking your ass bond, like I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I don't know. I don't know if I see it in Hindleston. I don't know. Hardy, definitely. That guy, right? He's ready to throw down. He's also very charm. Man, that's a good list. But Idris Elba's my. I just want to see it because, like, at this point, we know he's just like leaving race or whatever aside he's just so talented and would be an amazing bond yes. but the fact that him being black is a big even a consideration or even has to be discussed about the role it's like just do it so that if there are people out there that are like no we can just get them over with <laughs> fuck those I, people and just move I would, forward I, I i hate those people because it's like so you think there's never been a black spy in the history of man like how and fucking like, how fucking dense are you that you're like yeah you're so hell-bent on like like this character is yeah a, is three numbers it, yeah it's and it, it's just by default always been white right there's right. no reason nothing there's no reason you can't have every like celebrate because like celebrate every single culture through bond just fucking yeah. do it like i know it's, Oh, easily done. As long as they're fucking British, who 
cares as long as they're British. They have to be British. <laughs> I love how you're like, oh, they have. yeah, because as soon as they go into the American, they're going to go CIA. And then it's well, like, it's, it's, and then it's just, lost. yeah, it's no, Mission I, Impossible. Like, let Mission Impossible do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. that's basically like Mission Impossible is America's answer to Bond. Fine. And they're very different from each other. So that's great. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, you keep yeah. it British. It's the same way as I see Harry Potter. Like, it's just that is pivotal to the origin of the story. It's the same way as like Black Panther. Yes, it should be a black actor and a black cast playing those roles. Like that is what makes sense to the story and the characters and everything. So just being true to the narrative, I'm like, ah, uh, because it's also like uh, getting an American to play Bond. It's like so there was no British, there's no British actors that were uh, available at all, really. Like, um. I haven't said that. It's clear we're very, it's clear we're Bond fans, yeah. which I'm very happy about. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I just stop, stop it. It just Elba for Bond. Yeah, just do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Bond. I think we're all ready. 2021 to 2035, Idris Elba for Bond. <laughs> and someone said he's too old. And I said, okay, I'm down to see that. I'm down to see old Bruce Wayne. I'm down to see old James Bond. We loved old Logan. Old Logan you know, was fucking wicked. <laughs> Let's get him old. <laughs> you know, you, you made the Irishman, so you took an old guy yeah. and then yeah. you made him look young, but you didn't make him kick young. You just made you made him kick like a ninety yeah, year old, that I didn't like. looking like a I sick a, a forty year old. Whatever. I, We're tangent. We're tangent. Right. Hang on here. Let's right. get back. Right, right, put right. Let's back do it. Let's back. do it. Because <laughs> the next the next thing is you. So you want to talk about the shit you want to talk about. The next thing is you, which is Here. WB Warner Brothers' next animated movie. And yeah, now, you you can you can give me your hot take on this here because I know the video game Injustice, which is the movie that they're doing. But yeah, is Injustice a storyline that carries into the video game, or is the video game just titled that because it uses all the characters from Injustice? Like, how does this all tie together? So Why would it be? movie uh, i so i my experience with injustice was they actually did a comic book series and okay. storyline of injustice and i knew about the game i played the first game i think that the injustice one was one of the first games i played on my playstation 4 and it was awesome because you're like batman kicking the shit out of superman it's pretty like it was great um the storyline was really cool but then i remember i think they either tied it into a comic book storyline or because the game was so popular, they made comic books. So okay. I read the comic book storyline and it is fucking wicked. Um, Zack Snyder and the Snyder cut, all those scenes where it's that alternate future, that's from injustice. That is the injustice storyline. Okay. So the idea with the injustice storyline is essentially Joker uh, Joker, I think he basically takes kryptonite and he makes it a hallucinogen using kryptonite and like, you know, Joker shenanigans. And he convinces Joker uh, or he convinces Superman that Doomsday's back. I and... love how you consider shenanigans. Like <laughs> what, what like a sociopath does. You're like, shenanigans. Yeah, you know, you know he's just killing people. Shenanigans. That murdering. <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> It's just typical. Like, I feel like at this point at Gotham PD, they're like, Joker and his shenanigans, because he just doesn't stop. Uh, <laughs> he makes, like, basically, he makes Superman, he makes Superman believe Doomsday's back, and he grabs Superman, flies into outer space, because that's, of course, the smart thing to do. And it turns out it's Lois, and Lois is pregnant with their child. And then he realizes he just murdered Lois. And then he realizes what the fuck, and then it's Joker, and Joker put him under that. So, do you have this series? Do you have this? Uh, I own it digitally. I don't own. I want it. Like I'm trying to buy the actual whole collection as a series. I know they have it. I want to um, read. Want to read dude, that. it is. I. It is so good. But basically, Superman, uh, rightfully so. Loses his mind, and Batman's been calling it the whole time. Like, Batman has always been like, we need a backup plan in case Superman loses his mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So the scene in Justice League when um, oh, Thanos ripoff. Um, oh, Darkseid. Darkseid, thank you. Um, 
when he's standing over Superman and Lois's body is burnt, is that acknowledging that he took he, her into space and then she burnt up in the atmosphere? Kind yeah, of thing? It, it's 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 definitely yeah, it's definitely giving that like we know that the reason why this is happening is Lois because even in uh, Batman versus Superman when Flash has that weird like Bruce has that vision and Flash is like in time. He's like, Lois is the key. And then he's like, am I too early? I'm too early. And then like, he literally says, Lois is the key. They're totally referring to the Injustice storyline. And after watching the Snyder cut, and it makes sense, Snyder's all about that dark shit. He was definitely trying to get Warner Brothers to fully embrace. I think he (laughs) wanted to do the Injustice trilogy. That was my opinion. What I got from the Snyder cut was he was definitely going to make his trilogy or whatever the justice league trilogy was actually going to be the injustice trilogy because the fact that he put so much of it in the snyder cut and refilmed that part with leto which was really good he actually made me like jokers he actually made me like jared leto's joker i liked him in that scene i Um, i totally co-signed the fuck out of it it was great giving him that card and him taking it i just i was like oh (laughs) so good yeah, it was no, that so was good. It it may it may it always make up. May it continue to pay dividends continuously. Yes. That movie that it it will yep. always have a little gem in it forever and a always. Day. So, and I told I told people whether you like that movie or not, it's so important for that what it did and how it happened and everything. So this seems that this is part of. See, this is the stuff that like. So <clears throat> I've been I've been listening to other podcasts and they've been talking about how uh, a lot of the stuff that Schneider wanted to do in justice league, they were like, well, we have other plans for, and we mm-hmm. have, we, we, we're going to do this. We're just going to want to do this our way. So it seems that his pitch for wanting to do injustice over the trilogy is now being done animated. Is it going to yes. be, is it going to be decent? Cause I mean, you're putting a lot of weight on this comic book series so much, in fact, that it should be live action, but yes. they're doing it an animated, and it'll probably be an HBO Max release too. Yeah, so uh, that and that's a huge thing. So um, basically, like Injustice is very dark. <laughs> it's a very much mature. Like it's for the kids that grew up, and now they're like adults, and they want to see. So HBO Max is doing it, and if they go rated R, and not, and I don't mean rated R because it needs to be so like bloody and whatnot i just mean rated r that they don't have to worry they don't have to worry about how dark or mature they need to make it i think it'll be amazing and the voice cast because the voice cast needs to be good um because like these are storylines we've never seen these characters experience and it's crazy man like we see them at their worst um and you know yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's really good. And what I love about it is it is an alternate reality. Um, but it's also really amazing to see what superheroes can struggle with. And not even just the idea of keeping my identity secret and this and that. It's actual things like what happens if one of us, the strongest one of us, just turns evil. And like, Superman makes like his own like coalition of the world, which is that army that they show in Batman versus Superman. And they have his symbol on their arm. Yeah, that's that. that's yeah. right out of injustice. That's like that legit happens. He basically goes to the white house and he's like, Hey, I'm in charge of the world now. So I'm going to clean up your mess. And the first thing he does, he goes to Afghanistan and I'm pretty sure he just like lasers the whole mountain skyline because like the Taliban's hiding in there. So he just literally destroys all the mountain ranges in that whole country and collapses it on them. And he's like, hey, so guess what? Taliban's gone. And they are. Like, they just don't exist anymore after that. And that's what Superman starts doing. So you actually see the progression of why Superman turns evil and what he starts doing. And while this is happening, everybody goes into hiding because they do not have a strategy. And everyone's kind of being like, what's Batman doing? (laughs) And from there, dude, it's just like, like, that's literally the first like 10 pages of like this storyline. It's, and you can see when Snyder was showing it in in the Snyder cut, 
you can see why he filmed it with that kind of like fil- not filter, but you know, like that dark cinematography. And even though Flash is wearing red, it doesn't look red. It looks sad. And it's because like That's this cool. world is yeah, the whole idea is that Dark Side was who they always feared, and then it turned out it was Superman. And Superman, like Dark Side didn't even need to come because Superman just did that. Okay, now I'm I'm sold on it because I just thought like I I they they say here in the article that they tried to incorporate that story into the video games and the backstory. They do, yeah. I imagine it's not as in depth as, as the comics said. are amazing. Yeah, the comics are way better. Like the way they do it in the game, I give them props. It's one of the first times I've seen, and they started doing it with the uh, Mortal Kombat games, and they did a really good job. They're okay. incorporating narrative, but they also have to remember it's a fight game. So then it cuts to like you know. Wonder Woman versus Flash, because that's what needs to happen. And in the game, it's not as about the narrative. It's more about the encounters and fighting, which is fine because it's a game. The comic books is very much they're telling the story that should be told and the way it needs to be told. And they're not like stuck with like, we have to make these two characters fight because it's a fighting game. They'll only fight because it's justified with the storyline kind of thing. So... Okay. Okay. The, the um, game's not bad. The game's still pretty good, but I definitely recommend like actually reading the comics. All right. So there you have it. And, <laughs> and why? Like, I mean, I, I just, some of these things to me are just shocking. Cause I'm like, this is such like, now that I know this, I'm like, it'd be such a better story live action. I know, know man. And with Ben Affleck and Henry hey, Cavill and that whole cast. Hey, ah, hey, sorry, hey. sorry. 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 Cross talk sorry. motherfucker. It's killing me. Sorry. Um, I know it is. Keep it in your pants. So, <laughs> I, um, I just I'm not. I, I I just see it as a waste. I see it as as putting it out to for like just to say you did it. Like it it, it it's such a good and I mean the things that everybody has seen. If this is what you're referencing, because I mean I, I don't come from. I I mean I collected comics, but. I don't have a huge comic. I don't have enough of a Bible to know more than what is referenced in the movies to then go research. I don't know the 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 really the minutia of it. So I know what I know, but knowing that this comes from this book and it's this story and then seeing the bits and pieces of it, yeah, it would be a great fucking dark telling of it. But now we're doing it in the vein of Invincible or Castlevania or whatever because a, it's cheaper, but B, you can get away with a lot more in an R-rated animation than you can in an R-rated live action. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Final thought? Yeah, I'm I'm very hopeful. I Again, I think their rep so far for their animated movies is better than their live action. Like, I yeah. honestly, okay. like, I get more excited for, like, Long Halloween's coming out. I'm really excited for that, too, as well. So, as long as they stay true to the source material, I think, and again, I think you made a very good point. Being an anime, they can get away with a lot more, and I hope that they take advantage of that. So I'm very optimistic. I think it's going to be great, and I hope it is. So, um, Eternals, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What'd you think? I mean, first, first thoughts, I'll throw out uh beautifully beautifully shot obviously like Mm -hmm. they tried they did a very good uh chloe said this is what happened she told kevin feige she's like this is what happens when you shoot on a beach (laughs) like you this is the kind of beautiful so like they really let her shoot like you would a masterpiece like a beautiful thing because now it totally like I'm not saying that Marvel movies don't look beautiful, but I'm also saying Marvel movie Marvel movies don't look beautiful. And like it, you know, it just doesn't like it looks Lord of the Ring ringish now, right? It looks yeah. pure. It looks yeah. fancy. And you're like, well, it is fantasy, and fantasy has that regal aspect to it. So it's a very smart play why they picked her now, because the style of film that she makes has that that wispiness of fantasy to it. Like I haven't seen Nomad Land. I've just seen stills and whatnot, but like she just shoots with a with a with a cinematographer's eye as opposed to just a director's uh put together, lack of a better word. What do you what do you think? 
Yeah, man, I, I really agree. I haven't seen Nomadland, uh, but same like you. I saw clips and stuff like that. And it seems like her style is very raw and real. Like she just grabs her camera. She doesn't care about the audio equipment or what lens. She's like, I have my camera. I'm just going to capture these people right now in this moment in time. And with that trailer, I definitely got that impression. It's beautiful. And they did exactly what a teaser trailer should do. I'm very intrigued by it. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Um, very intrigued. Yeah, play with my nipples. Like you've like I'm I'm erect. I'm in. I'm in. I like it. But you, what's going on, right? Like, so it did a tra- It did what a teaser trailer should. Like I like. I feel like companies have had a hard time to make actual proper trailers and teasers where it reveals absolutely nothing but intrigues you. So they did a really good job with that. That cast lineup. That one shot with the cast just lined up there, fucking great cast, holy shit. Like that, that's when I was like, yeah, I'm, you, like now I'm very intrigued, but um, I'm not going to lie because it is Marvel and just because I am a fucking nerd, I would have liked just one little shot of something cool, something godlike, something magical you know something cool like even if it was just like a su- a superhero landing or like somebody flashed a little bit of their power just something yeah. like even uh shang chi gave us a little bus little bus action you know a little little bit in there but like i felt like it didn't do that it just was like it reminded me of a video game pitch it's like cinematics <laughs> landscape cinematic like you know what i mean it's like look at the engine Look at how the engine looks so beautiful and everything. Like nothing against that, but it was just that one little thing. But again, it's a teaser. It did its job. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't even really know what the fuck it's about, but I'm intrigued. I know it's Marvel and yeah, it looks beautiful. Like it looks gorgeous. <laughs> it, uh, it really is a ensemble. Yeah, man. That cast is wild. It's like, going to be a lot oh, of... That oh. joke. That's what it was. They make that fucking joke at the end about the yeah. who's gonna lead Avengers. That's right. Oh, I that... was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they go, now that now that Iron Man and Steve Rogers are dead, um, right? who will lead the Avengers? And then uh fucking Rob Rob Stark. Rob, Rob Stark <laughs> like well I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'll laugh at it. There's this theory. There's already a working theory, obviously, because we're all stupid nuts for this shit. So they're making fun of the red wedding there. That's what I thought. I'm like, are they laughing at the red wedding? <laughs> that that would be smart. That would be <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or oh, someone my. goes behind them, sure, asshole. And they're yeah. like, ah. <laughs> guy, guy comes in ready to like just walks up with a knife. He was like, oh yeah. bonk, bonk um, yeah. that would be funny. No, but uh Someone, someone's thinking that uh, when Cap went through time to put the stones back, he may have passed by them and told them not to interfere because they are, from my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, they are, like, we're getting into magic where yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, getting, we're getting outside of a really strong Hulk and a really super soldiered dude and a rich billionaire. Like, you yeah. know, these, these are modified humans where now we're dealing with ancient ones and gods of mythical power. So yes. and I, and I, I threw the, the list up cause I was like, wow, there's 14 characters. We all need to start getting to know before this movie comes out. So here's all their powers, uh, at real debaters, if you want to see that. And, uh, it was, it was, I was like, holy shit, this is one power. Like each of these guys has like six to seven different powers to themselves. We're like, yeah, Steve's got super strength, which comes with super speed, which, you know, you're just like, okay, but like, yeah, sorry, Steve, you don't hold a candle to like Ajax or uh, Cersei, which is funny that we have a Cersei with two guys from great, right? Like, that's great. You know, so there's just, there's a lot going on with this that Mark even said it. He was like, this is the age of magic for Marvel, right? It's not the age. It definitely is like, and I, even like WandaVision made a very big effort to let us know like, hey man, we're dipping into realms of lore yeah. in the MCU and uh, we're all for it, right? Like, let's get weird. Let's, uh, you know, like I have yeah. that, I don't like, I have a classic Marvel poster with just a lineup of superheroes on it. It's an animated poster, 
but it's neat going on it and being like, yeah, live action. They got a live action that live action that who's left. Yeah. There's a lot of wizards, a lot of like fucking crazy lore. And I think it's great that they're ready to explore that. I mean, phase four, when like, if not now, when, right. So, um, and I don't know a lot about this lore this division of the marvel universe if you will so i very much get to be like me and you are very much our nerd levels are at the same when it comes to these guys my friend like i'm i'm gonna find out stuff when you do and whatnot because yeah like even that lineup like i honestly i have um i have a little bit of a nerd boner for kamal nanjani i think he's he's one of my all-time favorites so i really just wanted to know what his character was and everything and his character is hilarious i think he's perfect casting for what they describe his character as. Um, but seeing that they all have these real, like you said, man, they're all stacked powerhouses. And if I'm not mistaken, Angelina Jolie's character is related to Thanos. And I'm like, they're cousins? Like, holy shit. So like, that's a whole nother, like, holy fuck. Like, we're, like, we're going to see, I'm telling you, like, this is, it's exactly what you said. It's so funny watching Iron Man 1 and two now and remembering like this is crazy and now seeing the where it is it's like you're a kid in a comic book store let's see how crazy we can get <laughs> yeah, how right? much, like how much can we spend right like how, and, how... <laughs> absolutely and you're you're reading those rumors i'm sure that sony is saying that this next spider-man is going to really do a job of linking their universes which is this is great like thank well, god okay so but I read that, but then today they were like, no, we're not doing that. And when you see Far From Home, or no what? way. Yeah, like they're flipping and flopping and they're typical I, Sony. Typical well, no. Sony. See, they're in bed with Marvel on this one because it's it's if this was an all Sony deal, then Sony could do and say whatever they want in regards to this, right? But because they've let Peter stray off the Sony lot and play in the the Marvel lot. They have to share that character and they have to be in my opinion, in my limited knowledge and opinion, they have to be careful what they say and and if that shit gets out. I mean, just think about how big of a deal the Sinister 6 is to Sony because it just yes. keeps, like it it puts it breathes life back into a couple movies that tried to do it and couldn't do it. So that's a big deal. Shut the fuck up. Deny, deny, deny makes more sense. I could be wrong, but they also said that when you see No Way Home, whatever's happening will make more sense. So there's an answer in No Way Home, possibly in the next two weeks, because the rumor is that that trailer's popping out any day now. Like, it's it's due. It's overdue. It's like nine and a half weeks, right? That, that yeah. trailer will pop, and yeah. maybe something will be in there. But you, I would love to see it. I mean, who is that? That's Carnage. That's Venom. Rhino, Lizard, Sandman, and Goblin. Um, yeah, like I mean, so right now it's interesting. There's Sinister Six that I think the MCU is also like they're putting together. It seems like it's uh, it's going to be uh, Scorpion, Vulture, uh, what's his face? My favorite, Mysterio. Um. Who else do they got there that they're, oh, um, and then I guess Venom, like this is the, this is the thing that's really interesting about it. And it makes sense. Sony basically had the right investors. They invested their money right with investing into Spider-Man and getting those rights. Absolutely great on their part. They just don't know what to do with it because again, their investors have more say than their creative side. So even this idea of developing Spider-Man's villain universe without the MCU doesn't fucking make sense. So I think what the MCU is trying to say is, Sony, for this to really work, you just got to let us take the lead on the announcements, take the lead on what to say to the public, because look at what they're doing now. They're fucking flip-flopping. And you know what they did that with? With Venom. Rated R this, rated R that. We got the Zombieland director. He made it rated R. And then it wasn't rated R. And I do believe the rated R rating made that movie shit. It really took away from it. Because now 
Venom is like a Deadpool and he's like the comic relief and it makes no sense. Spider-Man is the comic relief so that Venom can be dark. And then when Venom isn't dark enough, Carnage shows up, Venom and Carn or Venom and Spidey have to team up. Oh my God. Like this is the easiest fucking storyline and I have no idea what they're doing. Like I don't know. The way that they even explained Carnage in the trailer didn't make sense to me. I'm like, so he gets injected with the symbiote or the, like what? What is going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I fucking, Sony drives me nuts with what they do with Spider-Man. And it says a lot because we can all agree. Yes, I love the Toby one. I even didn't mind the Andrew Garfield one, but the Tom Holland one is the best one so far. That version of sure. Spider-Man is the most quality all around. He shows up in a lot of different movies and in his own, and it's working. It really is working. And that's Marvel. <laughs> that is Disney and Marvel. They are in the business of making this shit work. So I don't even think Sony should talk. Sony's comment should be like, ask Kevin. <laughs> we're told to ask Kevin. We're, we're told Kevin. Literally, we're just, my hand says Kevin. Ask Kevin. <laughs> two plus two is Kevin. <laughs> you know, like, just let that man do his job. He knows what he's doing. What is, what is, <laughs> what is, Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? LeVar. LeVar Burton, I'd like to answer the question. What yes. is Kevin? <laughs> oh, my God. We have a winner. Um, uh, yeah, like it's just. I, I, yeah. I, I can sympathize. And I, yeah, I think a lot of people see what you're saying with that, too. Because from what I always remember of Venom, a dark, um, sinister, if you will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alien, unkind, yes. mean, nasty prick. Like not, yes. not, not. I'm hungry. Although yeah. funny, Cookie monster. right? Right. And like, <laughs> can I eat the lady? Like these are, yeah. these are funny things. Which, right. I, I will. I will always do a venom voice if asked. Um, that was great. That was great. Spot on, my friend. But, uh, but not what we got so that's sony yeah where if you'd let kevin have had if you just gave it up like seriously like it, it, I, we can go on and on about this but it is it is it is a money play at the end of the day you are right about the yes and yes uh, but i mean who knows it could be flip-flopping it it, yes. it i really want to see that because it was teased and then it was dropped and i know you know so it's probably just at this point, let us see the fucking trailer and then we can make our own assumptions and let Reddit go crazy and do what we do. But like, just give us the trailer already. Cause now you guys are kind of ruining it by talking about it. It's driving me nuts. Like, <laughs> I know. And like, even the nerdy hub, they're like, we're getting inside information that the trailer is going to disappoint a lot of people, but it's also going to get a lot of people excited. I'm like, you can say that about anything you dicks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like anything ever. Like, I, the, like anything you ask, like, ugh. so that just made me nuts. I'm like, just drop it. Just let us freak out about it or whatever. Like it's going to happen. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> moving on, <laughs> we'll, we'll take out, we'll take the stake out of your heart. And <laughs> Thank you. Let's move on to something a little more R rated that you didn't get out of venom. I think this one's, this one's good. So, uh, news has it. The jackass four is oh, the last yes. jackass rightfully so yeah uh steve-o was paralyzed from the waist down for one stunt they won't tell you what that stunt is but they they paralyzed him from the waist down which i'm like i've been paralyzed from the waist down when i had to have my uh my achilles tendon repaired so i mean Ooh. not not that stunty yeah i'll tell you about that that happened in vegas Ooh. so uh anyways uh Jackass four, is it? And also Knoxville's fifty. Like, yeah, yeah. dude, you're gonna die. <laughs> like, yeah. Just yeah. Even athletes retire. Like, I'm not saying like the way that you abuse your body. Like, dude, that's why. Like, yeah. Like, I get it. I thought Jackass three would have been the last one. I mean, you know, I'm just really nervous that Jackass four is gonna be too tame for what we like. <laughs> okay, so they paralyzed him from the waist down, but as a kindness to steve-o who's a recovering addict they don't do painkillers anymore so a lot of their stunts right. are chosen based on how much can we take before we need to take drugs and then right stop right there but right 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 
that said, I just want to take a minute, take a moment to uh, pay respect to the show that taught me what jerking off a horse looks like and then drinking it. <laughs> to... Uh, uh, Things. Electric Avenue. What I'm what I'm getting at. Oh, is Electric my, Avenue is great. Our favorite, our favorite stunt slash sketch slash whatever. Uh, I'll go first. Um, Electric Avenue. If you remember, I don't remember which one it is because there's just so much jackass re that you it just all bleeds together. But it's where they set up the tasers and the cattle prods. And yes, and they're spinning and shit. <laughs> have to like navigate. <laughs> Yeah, it's like an obstacle course with just tasers. Yeah, and they're so, they're so powerful that like they launch like Bam got launched over somebody. Yeah, over yeah. Two, like boxes that were in the way that were obviously like you know deterrents for speed, and uh, like just lost his fucking mind. But just watching him like they sl- they they put the skull cam on it, and you just see him launch, and you're like, oh yeah. It, it was one of the first I really remember where like it just like cringing and I mean there's other shit to cringe on like but like that one just kind of I'm like just you have nowhere to go like nowhere to go it's just spinning yeah. and anxiety and they all they all say that one of the worst things and these guys are fucking monsters to themselves these guys have all said that one of the worst things ever still till date is tasers. They fucking hate tasers. And that blows my mind. Like these guys have done craziest shit ever and they hate tasers the most. Is that what, nuts? What's your, uh, what's one of your memorable? Um, oh, do you have, uh, do you have one? I love asking people this about Jagas. Do you have one that is so gross that you're like, nope, can never watch it. Like I'll never watch it. Well, I told you I watched the horse get jerked off and then watched. Yeah, that one was that one was oh, it was like I, it's a one and done. I've never seen that one again. I listen to it and then I leave the room because I gag because it's so gross. I have this problem that I'll try to watch something just to like push yourself. Yeah, like yeah. What? How much can you lift, bro? Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to disturb myself. <laughs> yeah. I- my attempt at manhood is watching something that you shouldn't watch and have a memory of. I think that's manly for some reason. Like, oh, yeah. if I could lift 250. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I could. you're like, <laughs> let's see how I many massacres watch. I can watch. <laughs> I, can, I can watch a Serbian film. What can you do, right? Like, <laughs> watch that movie, everybody. Don't watch that movie. No, no, no. That movie should be just completely burned. It should be. Moving on, though. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, the one where like he tries to ride the fire hose and then flies off and cuts open his butt. Oh, yeah. it makes my body feel like, yeah. like I'm like I can I can oh I'm a, I'm a spirit animal. I can almost feel that on my own butt cheek. That one's hard to watch. Yeah, uh, the the shit ones are gag worthy for a second. Yeah, too much shit, and that's. A private moment like come on what are we barbarians <laughs> and the, uh, yeah like i can't really i i can't really tell you that there's ones that i can't watch you is there anything you can't watch okay so yeah uh one from the show that i'll never i've seen what i call it one and done i've definitely watched it but i'll never watch it again uh dave england eats all the ingredients of an omelet and then throws it up into the frying pan cooks it and then eats it again uh that's like one of the growth that scarred me for life i saw that when it was like on mtv on like <laughs> sunday night at nine it's like yeah. fucking 14 years old and i'm like oh, oh, why um that's disgusting shit ones there's some shit ones that i definitely laugh there's some shit ones that i'm like like why like why um for shame. like uh the grow like one that i absolutely like i can't listen to the audio i have to like skip it is in the third movie they have uh preston lacy like on a tr- on a bike and he's wearing it like a a clear suit and he's just sweating in it and they basically fill up cups of his sweat and then they drink yeah uh even just talking about it yeah i can't that's when i can never watch 
Okay. All so right. those are those are my gross ones. My favorite ones. One of my all time favorite, always, always that I will always, always laugh is when they fucking go on the mini golf course from the first movie and they fucking just trash the mini golf course and Knoxville almost dies because <laughs> they flip over their golf cart and it like falls on him. Yeah. That one up until that moment, so good. Uh, Cause I love that idea of just them back to basics, just being dicks and going rampage on a mini golf course. <laughs> and like, you know, like one of those classic uh, gigs. I do love, I am a sucker for the Spike Jones old lady, old man <laughs> skits. Those They're are so stupid. stupid. Uh, so stupid. I mean, uh, it, it is great content for like, you know, dick and fart stuff. Like that's exactly. What yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's poop and it's, it's literal pu- poop humor. That's literally what it is. Poo 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 poo. Um, but yeah, like they made they made shopping carts. They brought they made shop like them and Bubbles based from Trailer Park Boys basically put shopping carts on the map. I don't think anybody <laughs> respected shopping carts before that. So, um, they got to go down in the books for that for sure. Uh, I think also too is what's amazing about Jackass is this was also a huge product of the time. And what I mean by that is like, these were VHS tapes that these guys fucked around with recorded with a home camcorder recorded a VHS tape and just like literally like just set them around and it went around and around and around. And then MTV, of course, because when MTV gave a shit about content and innovation, they were like, who are these guys? We got to find this out. And like, that is just so unheard of. Like, I guess it's YouTube now, but you know what I mean? It's just like, there's something crazy and vintage. It's like clerks. Like it's just about that's a total product of its time. And that started off as these fucking crazy kids. Like everybody had those kids that were just nuts in their school. They were clearly these kids. They recorded them fucking around. They put it on a VHS tape. And like the fact that that became Jackass is amazing. I know the I know the original Inception story for it. You want to hear it? Is it is it the CKY two K? I remember those tapes, and I I had one of those those Bam Margera tapes. But I love it. Tell me, I'm so excited. So Knoxville wanted to be a journalist before he was anything, or was into journalism, and he wrote for Big Brother skateboard. And what this guy booked an article to write about what it would be like to be an attack dummy in a self-defense course as well as like dog training, right? Like where you wear the dummy suit and then people kick the shit. And that guy couldn't do the story. So Knoxville said he would do it and he got there and the dummy, the guy that was supposed to be the dummy um, didn't show up. (laughs) Then Knoxville was like, I'll do it. And that is the moment that they decided to start filming this shit because they realized that's, that it was content. So that's it came, awesome. It came from an accidental assignment while working for Big Brother, and then he left Big Brother, and then they all got together and started filming shit. And see, and I, I love. I'm just a sucker for that shit because that's shit that I truly believe that it. it's like, it's you know, it's a rare. Like it's something that is so it's just so special about it. And I know it's jackass, but there's just something that's special that if that day never happened, who knows? I might Knoxville well could have just been a journalist, which is not anything wrong, but like I, I want a world with jackass. I'm sorry, but I want that world. <laughs> if if somebody wants to fact check me on that, they can because I, I I'm not taking liberties with the truth, but I think I might be like putting people in the wrong place, but I know but it's that definitely- also that, ju- but that sounds realistic to me. Cause again, man, think of the show jackass, what kind of like, you know, the only thing I could think of remotely close to something jackass was super Dave Osborne and super Dave <laughs> Osborne was a fucking <laughs> gang was like a sketched gang. Like, you know what I mean? But like, that's the only thing I could think of where it was like someone doing a stunt that was just like making an ass of themselves essentially. Right. Yeah. He and never like, up doing the stunt it was always a dumb yeah thing. right yeah. so it was like you know and then jackass like and the fact that mtv because again mtv was a network at one like they were the network that did reality tv and look at you know 
So the fact that MTV was still like, and it makes sense that of all networks, they would take Jackass because it's literally reality TV. It's the great, it's just outrageous reality TV, right? So, and then I feel like without Jackass, you wouldn't have fail videos and Tosh.0 and compilation fail, like, you know, yeah, you're shows right. like that, right? Because Jackass kind of made it okay to literally hurt yourself. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if the they sets made... in a sense. Yeah, <laughs> they... they made they made an like an a, an industry out of hurting yourselves, and obviously that can create copycats and stuff. But what I mean is like Tosh Point is definitely a commentary on just compilations of like stupidity, right? They <laughs> Jack Jackass were the stupidity. They showed <laughs> how to fail. <laughs> How to fail hard. Yeah. And yeah. also follow the warning before anything happened that these were stunts kids and that trained professionals were doing them and you shouldn't yeah. try them. Because as they soon were as so... you get to play <laughs> on it, somebody tried to do it. Of course. I yeah. definitely remember grade eight, Acadia Junior High, getting launched out of a shopping cart in a parking lot for sure. Jackass was inspiration. Without, I'm not blaming Jackass in any way. Charles knew fully what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I am the way I am today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's right. Uh, next on the docket. So you, we've talked about this before, but you are you from here originally? Yes. Or, yeah. Are, born okay. and born and raised in Winnipeg. I lived in Toronto for five years. Okay. So yeah, growing up, we're a little off age, but it shouldn't because theaters are around a lot longer than anything else but what was your favorite movie theater growing up oh i love this question dude this is such a dip this is a hard one but my all-time favorite was cinema city 8 on pemina highway that was like you were around for that okay oh fuck yeah man that was my jam man that was the shit i was explaining claudia that because she's from toronto born and raised and they don't really have anything like they have a theater called the Carlton, which I love, which is the closest thing to, but it's not quite Cinema City 8. Like when I tell people $3 movies, I <laughs> like $3 movies. <laughs> like I remember seeing the Matrix for three. I'm pretty sure I have those ticket stubs because I'm a nerd, but like seeing the Matrix for $3 on a Tuesday at Cinema City 8. Like, yeah, no, I remember, I remember cartwheeling across uh, the highway there to get to Fuck uh, yeah to get in there to see yeah. the wedding for sure uh it was it, you know it, the the classic red cinema city colors with the yes. arcade and yeah you could go to a movie and have dinner for like 20 bucks if you were okay with cheap cinema city food without a doubt and that's like you probably got too much food because the movie was so cheap like you could spend it all on the snacks yeah. Oh, you New ticket was nothing. Or for three bucks. It was easy. It was insane. The uh the famous players at Garden City Mall comes into my mind as one. Oh yeah. I, favorite one. What was in Portage Place? Not IMAX. Oh. But... Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Portage Place had not no oh, yeah. it the Globe. Globe, Globe Cinema. Globe Cinema. So yeah. Fuck that was wicked. That was a great theater. It's a great theater. Like they it was always like independent art house. Yeah. From, like weird like Globe World Cinema. And yeah. but like you could still go see like classic movies there the odd time. And it was just a huge theater. Dude, and they were it, massive. Like it just had that I don't know, there's just some there's just some feeling about it. Like Kildon in place, famous players, that 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 thing's finally getting gutted. Like that's yeah, hey. ever. Yeah, yeah. But that one was I remember that one was like one of the first, like, ooh. And then that the they had King Kong, the big King Kong cutout at Yeah. Patel, Silver, like a first Silver City. That was Yeah. That was I worked like, at that one. That was uh one of my favorite jobs. I worked what, there, I think. What was on your name tag? What was your movie? Oh, dude, you're going to laugh. So I think the first name tag I ever got had old school on it with Will Ferrell. Of course, Blue. Why would you? Yeah, uh, 100%. That's out at the time. That's what you put on your, on your, like, I felt that that was like a badge to be like, I'm cool. This is. Yeah, dude. 
Dude, that's what it, like that's what it was, and it was funny because you know, for and I'm sure you've experienced this for being movie nerds, it can sometimes draw a line in the sand in a funny way. Like I never was actually like I fucking hate you, but there would be times where I'm like, really, <laughs> like change my mind because <laughs> it'd be a movie like I'm like what? Yeah, it, movies like music, like art. Yeah, like- yeah, it's so subjective, right? Like. For nostalgia's sake, um, those theaters that we've listed are fan fucking tastic. But I think, oh man, so good. Agree with me now that Landmark is truly the. Mo- I miss the Landmark the most, mind you. I'm three minutes from there. That's <laughs> reasons, but like it really upped cinema experience. Like they say in their slogan, "Cinema," like for movie watchers, right? Like that's what they advertise, and they cater to us movie watchers with the Adam app and like this isn't me trying to get you as a sponsor but it is me trying to get you as a sponsor (laughs) Um, I 100 I fully dude I fully agree like Landmark went about it they're clearly thinking they're consumer first they're also respecting the lineage and the legacy of the movie industry like you go in there and it feels like an old cinema in the coolest way like in a very good way it feels like ah like, you know, the cinema experience, like it lives and breathes here, you know, kind of thing. And I like that old school, the lights and everything, but then they have those fucking brand new, like reclining seats and everything. So they're really just, again, they're thinking of their consumer. It's like, they give you the best of both worlds. They give you that whole movie experience and then the best comfortability. It's genius, man. It's why Cineplex was like, fuck, we got to do this now. <laughs> we have to make a whole new building full of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not attached to our theater just to convince people to come to our theater. I, I also can't believe they couldn't figure out a way to at least attach it. Or like, like literally behind Polo Park is an empty dirt fucking lot that's been like that for years, man. Why the fuck when they built it there? You could be wasted than walk over and see the movie. Like you guys, ah. That was so dumb, in my opinion. That was stupid. But oh, one of the worst real estate mistakes. So I, dumb. You know, and I mean, like, they don't even market where it's like, hey, if you're going to go to the theater after, uh, here's like a 10% discount to like, I know. like after and, and make your, like, there's, there's no, but I mean, mind you, like they opened and then, cause I went to their soft opening cause I'm, that's a humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the silent partners. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know somebody who's super cool. And you know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. wicked though. But like, uh, anyway, so I went and, and it's fucking awesome. But like, oh, it's great. Then COVID. So like, yeah. No real, like there was no real uh, chance for them, I guess, to market anything. But anyways, I, I'm just, I, I miss fucking theaters. I know you miss. I do theaters. too. I do too. I I pl- will say I I understand why people hated Warner Brothers for making it available at home, but the bottom line is for the movies I really wanted to see, if I really like if my movie theaters were open, I would see them in theaters. Like I wanted to see Mortal Kombat in theaters. I wanted to see Godzilla versus King Kong in theaters, but unfortunately in our province that wasn't a possibility. I'm going to drive to a different fucking, well, I can't, I can't even do that. So bottom line is I'm like, it sucks if we would have no opportunity to see this content, especially things like that, man, because nerds are ruthless. Like day of there can be spoilers if you're not careful. And I really hate that about these kind of communities with like these properties that really does drive me nuts. But having anyways, my point is, is that it's like, I am happy that they at least made it because it was nice to be able to watch it at home and at least see it. However, when theaters open back up, I hope they're going to show Mortal Kombat, like those movies we couldn't see, make it like five bucks. I'll totally go pay and see those movies. Like, I I want to see them. (laughs) I would pay full price. Yeah, I I mean, at this point, you may as well, right? Like, we want to bring the movie industry back, so. Like, I wonder if when they turn everything back on that they don't like like i feel that the movie theater is kevin McAllister, and ever like the government is the family yeah 
when they when they when they go to Paris, so to speak, or when they you know they they forget that the movie industry exists and they leave them at yeah, home. Yeah, and the movie industry is like, like, hey, what about us? Like, what? Okay, I guess I'll order a pizza and have a great weekend, but nobody gives a shit about me. Yeah, anymore. like, yeah, there, there, like, there has been no. The only thing that has been hit, there's nothing. I, I, it's. I, I don't want to offend anybody. It's the last thing we like to do here, but of course, of course, the the entertainment gig theater fun escape stuff that we like to go see, watch, and listen to. They have been hit super fucking hard, and I'm not about to like absolutely throw out a fucking line here about, but like the movie theater, just don't forget the movie theater people. That's all. Yeah, asking. like just don't let them just don't let them die. And I really hope the government has something in place to just, you know, ensure that they don't completely go out of business because it'd be an absolute shame for the movie theaters to go out of business for something like this. Like the fact that you couldn't even plan say your last movie to see like, you know, at least when rental stores closed, you could rent your last movie or buy one. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. Like, I, I also hope that there's always an outlet of movie theaters in some format. I really hope that Cineplex, like, they should do what movie theaters did in the 80s and 90s that made them so captivating is, yes, people are paying to go see a movie, but make it an event. You know, it's opening night have some trivia before the movie starts. Whoever gets the trivia right gets a fucking t-shirt or whatever. I remember when I worked at Cineplex, they used to do stuff like that. Get the crowd going and shit. You know, um, I don't even remember them doing that. Like they don't even do that. Like in the last couple of years, I don't remember anybody really doing that anymore. And it's something where it's like, you got to make sure that you're engaging and bringing people in more than just the movie itself because unfortunately in the day and age we live i can see the movie at home on my screen with this and right this and that hey i gotta fuck it let's do it let's just go to when the movie theaters open up we'll just ask them we'll be like yeah we're from the nerdgasm and we're from the real debaters and we want to go have some fun with people in the audience and and hype them up and make oh, it oh that'd be wicked yeah I'll, I'll, let us do it on a fucking yeah. minute soapbox and be like who wants to play some trivia yeah I'm afraid, I'm afraid to make a video of myself i am not afraid to make an ass out of myself live. oh man i would love <laughs> would love to host stuff like that dude i think it would be great and like especially when movie theaters open they might not have movies to play right away or not like to the revenue they need so do things like hey friday saturday sunday we're doing uh like we're doing a back to the future weekend we're going to show the first one Friday, second one Saturday. People dress up. We'll have prizes for best costume, do yeah. trivia, all that shit. And it'll be a weekend and people could pay like, I paid 20 bucks for that whole weekend. Why not? Do you know who, who would love to do that? Comedians who are also film nerds, you know? Cause oh, yeah. 100%. On our show that would, in a minute, if they could go crack some jokes about some stuff and do some fun trivia. I right. mean, that's... If if you work in a movie theater in Winnipeg, guys, okay, talking we're we're talking direct to you right now. If you yes. work in a movie theater, and this is something that you think is cool, and you want to reach out to us about it and talk more about it, and be like, hey, maybe my boss at X Y Z theater would go for something like that to 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 drum up some asses in the seats, so to speak. I'm going right. to start more on and and just be sincere and say, get at us if you think this is a good idea and see how far it can go. The real debaters, yeah. Are R E E. Um, we are closing in on the end here. As always, there's some stuff we didn't get to, but there is there's two questions I think that'd be fun to talk about because one of them is one of the most well known games on the planet, and the other one is something that <laughs> on the show has I'm sure jerked off over at least once. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. With an intro like that, uh, let's go for the app first. We'll give this a few. Have you ever played Temple Run? Oh, my friend, first <laughs> game I ever downloaded from the App Store on my iPhone. Until this day, one of my favorite all-time mobile games. Nothing has beaten that for me. It is easily one of, and I think it's because it's easy. 
and it doesn't require much. It's just good eye-hand coordination. If nobody has ever played it, um, you run through a temple, you collect things, you have to jump and duck. And yeah. it's faster and faster and faster and harder and harder and harder and does more turns as it goes. Super basic hand-eye coordination game. Now it is being turned into a reality television series. Wild. It's like it's obviously going to be in the vein of Wipeout for sure. Yeah, and like the floor is lava. Like Netflix had that shit totally. Did you watch the floor is lava, dude? Of course I did. I crushed it. It was ridiculous. It was it was easily one of the best. so many bad competitors, man. So many people that went on the show, and I'm like, what? Are, what did you guys not talk at all? Or, or hang on, did you never play this as a kid? Did you just be like, yeah, this, this, I know. This is a game five year olds fucking play. I know, I know. Like, I, I, dude, but it was good. I liked it. I really, there's something about seeing people fall and hurt themselves and shit that you just never get tired of. It, yeah, no, it's, it's so enjoyable. Um, yeah. Shauna got me down for it. And they're actually releasing another season because of its COVID pop. Like, that's, see, that's unfair to the algorithm because the algorithm's like, well, we had all the eyes. It's because we weren't allowed to go anywhere in Netflix. So, like, right. Uh, like, like now you've got people who are preoccupied with trying to get life back. They're not like, well, right. death from San Antonio, get across the lava. Right. So, right. You know, will another Tiger King emerge? Right. So it's kind of <laughs> yeah. like you don't have our full attention anymore, streaming services. So I, I don't know. But right. point is, Temple Run is going to be a game. Um, I'm excited. That excites you. Okay. I'm glad that excites you. Were you any good at it? Yeah, man, I used to be like, I haven't played it in years, but I used to be like borderline addicted to it. Like it went from like playing it on the toilet to just like playing it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used to do pretty, pretty good, at least for what I like, what the game was telling me and whatnot. But it's like, I don't know, there's something about playing it and then maybe watching something like it become the floor is lava where it, I don't know if it'll translate. Because, I mean, I get what they're going for, but I feel like it's just going to be exactly like the floor is lava. Like, they're just going to throw shit at them. <laughs> right? But, I mean, like, that's what it is. Like, that's... I, I like those shows, though, too, because it's kind of like... I've seen people very athletic not do well. I've seen people not, you know, stereotypically athletic not do well. So, I've seen... But I've seen people do well that you're like, what? How? You know what I mean? So I feel like it's one of those games where it's pretty even like to every competitor. Like you can't really expect strategy with things like this. You just have to be like, put it's yourself in it. No, I, I, I concur doctor for sure. Uh, I was, I was never really good at it. I would sit there and play this fucking thing for hours, hours on end. And uh, it would just, like I could, I, I would get on a run and then something important would always happen where like you, I'm like, this is not important. Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Right. Like I'll be here. All, and then like your wrist locks up because you've been holding your phone for like 45 minutes, but it just, <sighs> I, think, I think in a time where shows, like you said, like floor is lava and, and wipe out and, and whatnot, uh, American Ninja warrior, right. Kind of in the same. Oh yeah. Oh like, yeah. He's extreme fit. Like, and for reality television, I like a challenge. I don't like gossipy bitching. I like something that, yeah. you know, competition, like competition, cooking show, uh, forged. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, wild or whatever it is where they're out in the middle of nowhere and they have to like live for 30 days. Like that's a cool, that one's wild. Like that one's wild. Cause I, uh, I don't think I could ever do that. No, I have horrible probably. survival skills. There's one dude where they, uh, they have, uh, they put you out in the middle of the wilderness with a fresh kill. And the kill has been uh, taken care of in with local customs and indigenous ways. So it's it, and what they have to do is they have to take the animal apart without any tools. <laughs> oh no! And all they have is their wits and whatever's around them around camp so like they have to make rock tools to take and like they have a moose in the first one they have to take apart a full moose before sun fucking moose yeah and then they have Hope to survive shit. for a week Wait, it, do you have prime do you have amazon prime yeah dude it's on there do you have stack tv though uh i don't know i'll have to look 
but it's on the history channel stuff so if you oh have okay channel, then it's it's through there and uh i like, like that that's crazy oh yeah and see that's so like with temple run that's what i'm excited for because it's just another challenged like watching american ninja warriors fun until you're just like okay i've seen every way this yeah thing can be traversed so i'm you know i'm i'm out Right, because we're just doing the same thing over and over again with the same punchline. But with this, it changes. Like Temple yeah, Rule yeah, yeah. is like like the course is always the course. You have to you know negotiate the course the next amount of time. But with Temple Run, the, these right angle turns that come up yeah. with how, like how they're gonna make like Ellen's game of games too. Like with some of the size and scale of shit. That yeah, they I want them to throw like life size boulders at people, man. Like yeah. That, like, do you duck? Do you jump? Is there somebody running? Yeah. Out? Like, is there a character? Yeah. And if you trip, do, do like four people come up and like try to fuck with you? Like, what's what is how much of this game is going to be in in this reality show is yet to be revealed because it's it's super young. What what, ne- what network is doing it? Did they even what? Ne- I didn't even see. Uh, I'm afraid. I just saw that they were making the show. I don't even know what network's doing it. You know what? I don't want to jam up the Zoom so close to the end because. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it's you, a network it's yeah. happening we, 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 we <laughs> have once so speaking of uh mental note we'll put it on record you need to send me this episode because i didn't press record you did <laughs> okay oh okay yep i will send you it totally fine uh i just wanted to remind myself while we're editing to be like yeah yeah this is i don't have a copy of this so i need to <laughs> um, For sure. anyways back on point here what i mentioned was that we'd all jerked off over something and i guess we should you know, point out the elephant in the room is not an elephant, first of all, and none of us really jerked off, second of all. Third of all, though, well, 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 <laughs> well, well. Uh, I feel that this is a great place to close because uh, it's just going to just churn the waters again for more of this next week. Uh, but you asked the question, and you know more about this than we will, so uh. what are your quick hopes your short list of hopes, your big bullets, your like must haves for Invincible season two, not three. We know we're getting two and three, but what do you want in the next installment to be? And I'll pick uh, up you say, cause you know more than I do. I, yeah. Like I don't, obviously I don't want to say too much uh, because, you know, from what I've seen so far, they're doing a very good job of adapting the novel, like the graphic novel. So, okay, but let's play, let's the play, last, let's play this for a second. Yeah. How much do you hope that we get of Home Planet? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so it's really interesting to see what they feel like the duration of the whole show is going to be. But based on what I've seen. I feel like they're not they're not in the business of doing fillers or any storylines that aren't necessary. So I think season two is gonna be, yeah, I think it's gonna be all home planet, and I think it's gonna progress. Like I think it's gonna end on an even bigger cliffhanger than it kind of did. Okay, all right. And um, I think we might get a little bit of time jump, a little bit. Well, hmm. Hang on, hold that thought. Um, <laughs> Because uh, what's uh, I can't remember the name of the alien planet for the life of me now. What's what what is it? Oh, uh, Viltrum. Viltrum. Thank you. Okay, so for those, because you Charles has read everything. Charles is well fucking. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Charles knows <laughs> e Mark, Jimmy, Martin, Ian, everybody else. Everybody else doesn't fucking matter. Um, we've never read a comic book. Well, Mark, <laughs> we haven't read this comic book. Is what I'm getting at. So Charles has got the inside tip on this. He's, he knows what horse to bet on. So <laughs> without ruining it for me and ruining it for everybody else who hasn't seen it or people who have, people maybe can hit you up in the comment section and be like, motherfucker was wrong. Um, <laughs> I love that too. That's my favorite. <laughs> put you out there. Uh, so where does, where does this galactic empire that Seth Rogen's character, the one eyed alien, do you think that's going to be because he mentioned thousands of planets and other solar systems and like there's this intergalactic planetary like G12 or G7 um is yeah. that linked to the story because i mean to inter- to throw Seth Rogen in at the end of the episode and then 
just be like, whoa, okay, we got him a little bit. Now we got a lot of them, and he's explaining a fuck ton of the story. Is that something that people can look forward to, you think? Absolutely. Um, if it's anything, like, what I will say is, like, Alan was very much like that in the comic book, too. He showed up the same way. He showed up to the wrong planet, <laughs> to, uh, and, and it turns out he's been doing this for a long time, and it's just something that uh, Omni-Man just puts up with. And it's like a gang, clearly. So that whole thing was true. And then him coming back, the way they did it, yep, like right out of the comic book. And what's neat is that we're going to explore, like a lot has happened in season one, but it's all kind of us being like a puppy dog first day at home kind of thing. Season two, I feel like is going to be like, a lot of this is going to be explored and developed a lot further. And you're going to see that everything that's happening is kind of a drop in a much larger scale of things. I know that's such a bruh explanation, but I just don't want to spoil anything. I love, I love this game because it's like, tell me all about it without spoiling it. Like a TikTok video. Uh, <laughs> right. So, which I think, I think it just birthed an idea for a TikTok video, but I don't want to say it because then someone else will pick it up and they'll be like, I want 40,000 fucking likes. Uh, <laughs> anyways. No. Okay. So to that point, w there's already been a long list of characters who've gotten the intestines beaten out of them. There's yeah. a decent list of characters already. Is there a whole new cast of characters on Viltrum that, or are you going to be staying? Are we going to be like, are we going to be introduced to another group of Viltrumites from another planet? Like, what, what's, what's the teaser to come for Mark and Ooh. Man? Um, what I will say is, without giving too much away, is that we know the fact that Omni Man has revealed a majority of, like, he revealed the truth about the history of Viltrum and their people. And the fact that Alan confirmed that and whatnot. Yes, that like the Viltrum, let, let me just say that in the comic books, they actually had a saga series, if you will, that focused on Viltrum and focused on the Viltrumite storyline. So yeah, it's uh, it, season one did a beautiful job of really planting a lot of seeds and there's some obvious ones there's also ones where you're like oh man people have no idea but this is so exciting <laughs> like yeah point there what about the amount of violence that we've seen so far like was is the amount of violence in the comic book are we getting a live action version of the of the of the flips of the pages like is it is it pound for pound the same shots just done now in a way that is really fun to watch. And will that violence continue? Because that's, that is a huge selling feature for all of us. First of all, we're all fucking sociopaths. So I'm like more blood, right? Like, yeah. I, Oh yeah. I'm, I'm on it because of a dark take on a, on a, on a good idea in a way that's doing a very good job of storytelling. Normally I would not be sucked into this, and these are the reasons why. So will I get more ultra violence? Will uh, I get more <laughs> darkness and drama? Yeah. Like, let me just say like, yeah, like there's going to be some Viltrumite versus Viltrumite shit. And that's like, imagine Superman fighting Superman, right? Like that's a whole nother level of insanity. The other thing, like, the violence, I will say. Is there another train coming? <laughs> yeah, okay. I do not remember that at all in the comic books. I really have to go back, but that was something. What I remember in the comic books was Omni-Man grabbing that soldier after Mark saved him and literally doing this and like fucking Jello, it ex his head explodes on Mark. That was right out of the comic book. Uh, him throwing Mark into the city and it causing like a crater and basically wiping out that's yeah. a lot of the comic book, but Omni Man. So Omni Man in the comic book beats like that happens. He beats the shit out of Mark in front of everyone, and then that line where Mark's like, "I'd still have you," 
And then Omni Man like has he's like ah feelings, and then he shoots off into space from there and has that scene where the tear freezes. But he actually does that all in front of everybody, so everybody now knows Mark is invincible and that his dad is Omni Man. Whereas in the comic or in the show, they made that fight private, so it's still like Mark has a secret identity. So that's a different kind of little take on it, which I kind of like. That's something new for that me helps. as a reader. Um, and obviously they want to play around with Mark still having that, you know, uh, like invincible kind of uh, secret identity and stuff. So yeah, the but the train thing, I'm pretty sure that was the show. That was fucking crazy, man. That was nuts. That montage of just people exploding over them was like... That I told Claudia, I'm like, imagine those artists trying to explain to their significant others or just to the, anybody what they did for work. Yeah, I had to draw a bunch of people exploding. There's a train. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely. Like, I, my neck was sore. I was just like, oh. Yeah, oh. it was. That was nuts. That was nuts. It was an on, it, it, and it did its job for sure. But yeah. I, but the, yeah, the violence is going to be a lot. Like, we're, we've seen nothing. Say nothing yet. It's gonna get way more. It's gonna get way more insane. And we're also like Mark. Ah, there's so much. Mark's storyline is about to. Mark's storyline is incredible. It's about to just take a few notches up even further now. Like a lot's happened to Mark. That like this is beyond. My uncle got shot, and I'm Spider Man. This is like my uncle is the villain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my, my dad, like, so he's heartened as a superhero in the time that most superheroes take 20 years. It's like, he's gotten 20 years of absolute experience now jammed into like an evening because of what has happened to him, like mentally. So that's going to be a really cool factor to see too. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love I I'm still surprised how much I love animation now. Like I'm just I'm waiting for the, waiting for it to be like a new toy and to wear off, and I'll be like <laughs> I'm going back to the things I know that have you know continued joy. This this was just a weird relationship. I was experimenting. And I was young. <laughs> I didn't know any better. Know any better? You know, <laughs> just it felt right. It was warm. No, nah, whatever. Uh, the point. <laughs> It felt nice. <laughs> it felt nice. I like warm. Warm's nice. The point is, is that Invincible is the shit, and Robert it's amazing. Is the shit, and I'm gonna steal your books from you and read them, and I'll give them back. Yeah, man. Hell them. yeah. But that, sir, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous right now because I just realized that, like, I think you were the one having the glitchy problems earlier, and I wonder if that, oh, your hey. version of the recording, because I didn't record this. This is oh, pretty- is the audio recorded at all? Or is well, the, I'm I the only one recording the audio? We're the only one because... Uh, <sighs> so here's here's the thing. If people get to hear this, then none of this happened. And this will all be taken out. <laughs> or it did happen. I don't even know my train of thought anymore. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to inception myself. What the point is, is I... My SD card is full because I'm a dumb dumb and you recorded this. So whatever recording you have of this is yes, the it will be. is the recording. Okay. So, um, which is going to be one audio file or two or two. Okay. I'm hoping it's two. Like I just realized this. God, I hope it is. I yeah. really hope it is. Yeah. Well, this is, this, this is part of podcasting. <laughs> you guys get to experience. So this is kind of like, this is uh you get to experience, uh, the real world of doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, like it only hit 58 minutes and we've obviously been doing this for two hours. So, um, that's fine. We'll just, uh, <laughs> these, we're going to figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. This one might take a little bit longer to release, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's understandable. We'll switch back into it and kill this thing down. So, uh, well, you know what, man, I, uh, I, we, we hit, we hit most of we hit 80 percent of the list which i feel nobody a wants us to hit the whole list because that's too much and b maybe we shouldn't do the whole list maybe we should trim back so but i feel 
I feel that we we've 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 covered the majority of the things that get us wet or hard, whatever you feel. Hell yeah, man! I got my fix. <laughs> Stick it in my veins. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm I'm gonna let Charles tell you where to find all of his fun goodies. Uh, Charles, where where do people find more of the nerdgasm? Oh, uh, so you can find more uh, of the Nerdgasm on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash cfbomb. All issues of the Nerdgasm are all streaming there right now. Uh, also, we have an Instagram page. So you can follow us on uh, Instagram at the.nerdgasmshow. I put content that's exclusive to Instagram and then stuff that's exclusive to YouTube. So you should check out both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah shit. breakfast uh, club yeah. and all that information will be on um our page as well on our website realdebaters.ca where you can find all the things about us if this is your first time listening then head there right now uh you, you, if you if you skip this first part of the uh the intro ha i've got gotcha. you be quick <laughs> Go check us out. Go 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 look. Go find out more. Uh, Charles, you got to send me your bio. I got to send you the data sheet. We're we're doing everybody's bio. Yes, website's That's awesome. right. I will send you a copy of Zet so that you cool. can pull out your measurements, which aren't measurements. Yeah, they're just. I'm a D cup. <laughs> they're your movie measurements. So the only ones that count. Um. <laughs> um but yeah, so the real debaters.ca is where you can find all of us. Read about us, find out where you can subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Uh, if you want to donate to the show or shop our shit, uh, it's not actually shit, it's really good stuff, specifically sweaters, toques, hats. Uh, I think we maybe even sell pajamas, but skateboards, you know, skateboards. Thank you. It's always with the fucking skateboards. Someone buy a skate. <laughs> Rob Strachan, Rob Strachan says the first person to approve a purchase, send it to us that you bought one. We will. Let you help us make a show and you can dedicate it to a loved one. Oh, uh, that's awesome. No, that really means nothing. But the first person who buys a skateboard, you know, can make us look like fools. So that should be, that's, that's really the pride. <laughs> uh, the donation thing don't mean shit, but <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean shit. Uh, and then if you want to follow us online at Real Debaters, uh, Twitter and Instagram and our YouTube page, we have YouTube now as well, too. Whoa. Uh, where you can watch five minute clips of the shit we've watched and we give you the most honest, uh, stripped down, uh, pandemic video quality shit that we can and gussy it up <laughs> and, and make a quick review of what we've all watched. Charles is going to do one, uh, cause he knows what he's doing. We're just learning, but it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, you should go check it out. So that's Real Debaters. And all the spelling for all of our stuff, the website, the email, the follow us, it's all R-E-E-L uh, to stay in line with our brand. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I uh, you don't have anything exciting coming We don't have anything exciting coming up. You don't have anything worth mentioning? Um, I ju yeah, I just released uh, uh, the latest issue of the Nerdgasm. It's uh, called The Nerdies. It's like my little award show. It's my best and worst of 2020. Uh, I do what the Oscars doesn't have the balls to. So <laughs> you can figure out what the fuck that means. Uh, I'm also currently editing uh, my Resident Evil uh, gameplay video. Uh, so it's just basically a compilation of me just like losing my mind while playing it. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I got going on. And of course, looking forward to many more debates. That's oh, right. Because you're an honorary mass debater now. So that's right. That was always half the reason why we picked debaters because we just took masturbation and played with the word. And now it's fun. <laughs> well, we technically I'm a pro debater. Yeah. You're a pro debater. <laughs> uh, we gather on masturbation. Uh, masturbation right. is fun, right? Like it, 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 it works, right? It works. Oh yeah. As long as there's bation happening, it's, it's legit. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration, <laughs> masturbation, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Michael Petro, and this has been Charles Fernandez, who's never on time. And never. Are gone. Oh, and watch. Don't let me. Don't make me remind you. Watch all the movies. Now we're gone. We're gone. Say we're say we're gone, Charles. We're gone. Bye.